All right, I'm back after a break. Uh, time for more non-homogeneous stuff. All right, so we have our recurrence. k but it's non-homogeneous so we have our extra function f of n okay so we got this recurrence now let's suppose that f of n has a certain form okay so let's let's tough it out through this and then we'll do plenty of examples to illustrate what it is I'm talking about here. f of n equals p of n times s to the n. Where, actually I better be careful, I need to conserve space here. Where? Pn is a degree t polynomial. Or a polynomial of degree t. Lots of letters here. Uh, S is just a number. So in, essentially, in, in words, f of n, the non homogeneity can be factored as an exponential part times a polynomial part. So a polynomial times an exponential function. That's all this is saying, but we need to give names to the degree and name to the root, or the, the name to the uh, base, because they'll come up in the uh, guesses here. Then there are two cases. So again, remember what we're doing. We're establishing what is the means for guessing a particular solution for the non-homogeneous recurrence. The first case, uh, I'll have to write one and then erase it and write the second one, I think. So the first case is APN will be of the form, well, the exact same thing, but a different polynomial. So Q of n times s to the n, where q of n is a polynomial with the same degree, uh, so when does this work? So this, this happens. Um, If S is not a root of the associated characteristic equation. Okay, so let, let me. I'm really missing having a full chalkboard to write everything down at the same time. Um, so like from last time, we have our non-homogeneous recurrence. There's also the associated homogeneous recurrence that we get if we ignore f of n. That associated homogeneous recurrence has a characteristic equation. Uh, I left off the word characteristic. Characteristic equation. And then from that characteristic equation, we find the roots to help us construct the general solution to the homogeneous recurrence. Okay, so if you do that, if you, if you take that characteristic equation and find its roots, if one of them is S, this doesn't apply. That'll be the second case. But most of the time, neither, none, sorry, I say neither, but there could be up to K of them. None of those roots will turn out to be S most of the time. 
or a lot of time. If you randomly pick these numbers, then almost never. But if S doesn't show up as one of those roots, then this is our guess. We make up an arbitrary polynomial with unknown coefficients with the same degree as, as P up here. And then we multiply times the same exponential function. Okay, so just for a quick illustration, I don't want to do the whole problem at this point. Um, let me just illustrate this case before I erase the rest of it. All right, so suppose we had a n equals, now let's just go with the same one that, from a previous example. Um, yeah, let's say this. n squared times 7 to the n. Let's say that's our non-homogeneity function. Well, the, 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 let, let's, it's, it's really better in, in the long run to do these, these non-homogeneous problems, the, do the homogeneous part first so that you know what the roots are so that when you guess your particular solution, you, you know if, whether or not this 7 is a root. So really, the best way of doing it is you first look at the homogeneous recurrence and then look at its uh, characteristic equation, r squared minus r minus 6 equals 0. Here the roots were 3, or, yeah, 3 and negative 2. So then you go over here. These are the roots that I have to pay attention for. I go over here. f of n is n squared times 7 to the n. So we have a polynomial part of degree 2. And we have an exponential part with the base 7. 7 is not one of our two roots from over here. So that means we're in case 1. My APN is going to have the same structure as this. It'll be an unknown degree 2 polynomial times 7 to the n. So it won't just be n squared. It'll has to be any. It could be any degree two polynomial. So it has to be like a n squared plus b n plus c. That would be the q of n that I erased. But then I have to multiply that by seven to the n. Right. So again, we're not saying that anything of this form will be a solution to this. We're saying that there is something of this form that a solution to this. So then we would have to go, I'm not going to do it here, but we'd have to go and solve for a, b, and c by plugging this formula into this recurrence and then going through the algebra to solve for a, b, and c. Okay, so with these can get fairly messy quickly depending on how big the degree is. Okay, so that's just to illustrate. Now let's talk about what happens if 7 was one of our roots here. That's our second case. All right, so this is the trickier one, naturally. Uh, so if S is a root of the associated characteristic equation. I just can't get every single word on the first try. Of the associated characteristic equation. Okay, so that leads to another question. It's a root of some polynomial equation. So it has a multiplicity. So let's give a name to that multiplicity. Uh, with multiplicity m. Then a, p, n will 
have the form. Well, it looks it starts off looking the same thing, but leave, leave a little space there. Q of n times s to the n. All right. So here's the way to think of it. This is my initial guess, but if this was if this is what it was, this is going to show up as part of your homogeneous solution. Because your homogeneous solution, remember, is a, is a combination of these exponential things for, for the different roots of the characteristic equation. So s is one of those roots. So there will be stuff in the homogeneous solution that involve s to the n. And so what I have to do is similar to what we did um, a couple videos ago, where we had a repeated root for the homogeneous equation to, to make, it, make sure that this does not only look like a homogeneous solution, I have to multiply by more n's. So I need to multiply by an n, at least one n, to make things different, to, to shift it away from the existing terms of the homogeneous solution. Um, but I need to do it m times. So I need to multiply by n to the m power. Okay, so this is where it gets messy. All right, so that, that's a do one of these to illustrate and then we'll practice with various ones all right okay so let's let's go back to our well We'll do a couple initially. So let's go back to the same uh, homogeneous part. So a n minus a n minus one plus six a n minus two. We already know the roots for that, but let's make up a different uh, non-homogeneity. So the roots for this homogeneous uh, equation for the characteristic equation were three and minus two. So suppose I had negative 2 to the n times n as my non-homogeneity. So let's illustrate. As we've seen, the characteristic equation is this. And the roots are 3 and minus 2. So ahn would have the form alpha 1 times 3 to the n plus alpha 2 times negative 2 to the n. Okay, so that's the homogeneous side of things. For the particular solution, APN, this will just illustrate the thought process behind why this works, or why we do it this way. Um, as before, we want to try to match this. So we want to try to match this same type of function. So you write the same exponential part, negative 2 to the n. And then we have a polynomial part, which is a linear polynomial, a degree 1 polynomial. So I need to multiply this by a n plus b. Now the problem is, if I left it like this, the b, b times this exponential part, that's going to be of the form alpha 2 times negative 2 to the n. So that would just be part of my homogeneous solution. For this to work out, I need to have the full freedom to have two possible coefficients here, two unknown coefficients to allow me to get that correct uh, non-homogeneity. Non so I, I can't have anything that's going to be absorbed into this homogeneous solution. So to avoid that, I can't have any like terms with this, so I need to introduce another n so that all of my powers get shifted. So then I'd probably simplify this as negative 2 to the n times a n squared plus b n. And notice this is a common mistake with these is 
when you have when, when you're in this situation where you're, the base of your exponential part is one of these roots, the temptation is to just increase the degree of the polynomial you're multiplying by by however many uh, extra. So this is multiplicity one, so we'd increase it by one. But notice it's not really a full degree two polynomial. You're not going to have the constant part here. So I think generally you can get away with it if you put that plus C there and made a full unknown quadratic, but it's going to make it much more of a headache to solve for the uh, coefficients. Um, it's more of a mess to deal with. So you, you start with the same degree that you have here, so degree one, and then you're just multiplying by more ends, what, depending on whatever the multiplicity is of the root. Negative two has multiplicity one, so I multiply by n to the first power. And that just increases the exponent, increases the exponent of each of the ends in your polynomial here. It's not increasing the it's not, it's not simply increasing the degree, it's keeping the same number of terms, but increasing each term's degree. Alright, so let's do another one. fun let's mix up the letters just because we, we don't want to get too um, fixated on always calling our sequences a uh, so suppose it's b in and let's think how about eight b in minus one um, minus 16 B in minus 2 plus um, N cubed times 4 to the N. Alright, so again Right now, I just want to get the form down, the form of the particular solution. So the best practice for doing this is, as I said before, do the homogeneous stuff first. So I have the homogeneous recurrence. Then we'd figure out its, its um, characteristic equation. It's still degree 2, so it'll be r squared minus 8r and then plus 16 equals 0. So now this factors as r minus 4 squared. So r equals 4 is the only root, and its multiplicity is 2. It's a repeated root. OK, so For the particular solution, then, we look at the non-homogeneity. It's a degree 3 polynomial times a power of 4. 4 is our root, so we have to keep that in mind. But first, to, to write our particular solution, I'm going to write the exponential part, so 4 to the n. Then I'm going to match. How did I write it on the chin? I guess I've been putting the exponential part last. So we'll have that 4 to the n in front of it, or, or times it, doesn't matter where we put it, but times it, we, we need to match the same degree that we already have. So we have degree 3. So I need a deg degree 3 polynomial here. A in, a in to the third plus b in squared plus C in plus D but but since 4 is our root we have to adjust so we have to multiply by ends and the point is 
our homogeneous solution back here, our homogeneous solution would look like oh, alpha 1 times 4 to the n plus alpha 2 times 4 to the n. But remember, we, we can't leave it like that because then these would be like terms and they could be combined into a single alpha. So we had to multiply the second one by n so that they'd be distinct from each other. So they can't be combined. So comparing that to this, now if I left my a, a p n like this, both d, d times 4 to the n, that would be combined with this. c n times 4 to the n, that would be something of this form. <coughs> Excuse me, of this form. So if I left it like this, both of the both C and D would be, uh, they wouldn't be contributing anything to the particular solution. They'd be part of the, the homogeneous solution. So we can't leave it like that. That means I need to shift so that both of them are above, or at least n squared. So I didn't multiply by n squared so that both of these escape the homogeneous solution. So I multiply by n squared. That means A P n could be written as a n to the fifth plus b n to the fourth plus c n cubed plus d n squared times 4 to the n. Okay, so this one, now there are four unknown coefficients that we would need to solve for. This one would get very messy if we wanted to actually go the rest of the way. Um, we plug this formula into our, to, into our equation. I guess I should have been calling them B, P, N, but it doesn't matter. Um, in general, uh, the, the kinds of problems I would be asking you to do. So I already assigned you some problems to solve some homogeneous recurrences. That's straightforward. There's not they, Those can't get too bad unless I get really high degrees and it becomes a difficult factoring problem. Uh, but those are fair game. If I ask you to solve a non-homogeneous recurrence, um, then the non-homogeneous function part, that this part will be relatively simple so that solving for these unknowns will be short, or relatively short. Um, but for this kind of stuff, I could just ask you what is the form that the particular solution would take without actually having you solve for the coefficients because these can get messy fast all right um, so let's let's do one more to just practice coming up with the forms and then we'll do maybe one or two where we're solving one completely uh, But let's do one where we can do several examples at once. So that this is modeled off of some of the homework problems in the book. They, they ask them like this. So suppose we have a recurrence. Um, a n equals um, 2 a n minus 1 plus 3a and minus 2. And now let me not specify f just yet. We have this recurrence. And now the, the question is, find the form of, a, of the particular solution APN if Let me leave some space to work here. Well, yeah, let me leave some space to work. We're going to have multiple parts. So I, can, I can erase the parts as we go. But if, and then it gives you a specific f function. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so let's, let's do f of n equals n squared times 2 to the n. So regardless of what this was, before I approach anything there, 
I want to analyze the homogeneous part. So first we need to know what are the special roots we have to be on the lookout for. So our homogeneous part is just if I ignore the Fn, it's this. The characteristic equation would be r squared since this degree 2 minus 2r and minus 3 equals 0. So that's r minus 3 times r plus 1. So the roots, the special roots are 3 and negative 1. All right, so then you look at the actual non-homogeneity function. The base of the exponential part is 2. So 2 is not one of these roots. So I don't have to do anything special. I just say APN is going to be a polynomial times 2 to the n. And the polynomial should have degree 2 because it's n squared here. So we have a n squared plus b n plus c. And that's it. This has no relation to the homogeneous solution, so I, I don't have to worry about uh, combining like terms. All right, so that's that case. That So now let's do a different one. If we had, say, 3n minus 1 times uh, negative 1 to the n, well, you look at the homogeneous part, or sorry, you look at the exponential part, the base is negative 1, that's in our list, so that means we have to do something special. But we, we approach it, start in the same way. First, you basically match the exact form. You've got negative 1 to the n. We have a linear polynomial, degree 1 polynomial, so I'd put a n plus b. And now, negative 1 to the n times b, that would be something that would be similar to something that would appear as part of our homogeneous solution. So I need to adjust this. I need to multiply by n to the multiplicity of negative 1. Well, negative 1 just appears once as a root, so it's just n. So my particular solution would look like a n squared plus b n times negative 1 to the n. Okay, uh, let's do one more. So that was part B. Those are the important things you have to pay attention to. All right, so now part C. <clears throat> if f of n were, let's say, n cubed. Now here's... It's actually simple in this case, but we have to be very careful with this. APN, n cubed, the way it's written, it doesn't exactly match the form of, of what we've been talking about. There's a polynomial part, but I, I haven't specified an exponential part. So if I don't have an ex, if, if it doesn't look like I have an exponential part, my exponential part is really 1 to the n. So I have to pay attention to that because. In my roots here, it's possible that 1 is among them. And in that case, I would have to treat it the same way as I did, it, did negative 1 in the previous example. But in this case, 1 is not among these roots, so we're good. My exponential part's 1 to the n. My polynomial part's degree 3, so I'll have a n cubed plus b n squared. Didn't leave myself enough room again. Plus c n plus d times 1 to the n, which doesn't change anything. So in this case, that's it. So let me do one more example. I have to, I have to change the recurrence, though, because uh, I need to change the roots there. Um... Let's say 2a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2. I don't know. Um, minus a n minus 2. 
plus f of n. So again, before we worry about what f of n is, let's think about what the homogeneous part looks like. Our characteristic equation would be r squared minus 2r plus 1 equals 0. That's r minus 1 squared. So r equals 1 and its multiplicity is 2. So that's when we have to be very careful. When, when 1 is one of our roots, we have to pay, make sure to pay extra attention to the type of function we've got there. So if f of n, I'll do two parts to this. If f of n is like n times fi 5 to the n, n times 5 to the n, there's nothing weird going on. 5, the base, is not one of our roots. So APN would just be a linear polynomial, AN plus B times 5 to the N. So nothing wrong there. But if it was just N, if F of N was equal to N, then I have to think of that as, a, as having a polynomial part and an exponential part. So my exponential part in that situation, let me separate, is 1 to the n. And the base, 1, is one of our roots. So APN, this is part B, APN would be, well, I need a linear polynomial to match n, a n plus b, I need the exponential part, 1 to the n, but then 1 is one of our roots. Its multiplicity is 2, so I have to adjust this by multiplying by n squared. n because of the root, and it's squared because it's a multiplicity 2 root. So my actual particular solution would be a n cubed plus b n squared. And 1 to the n I can leave off. Because it's not it's not really important for the formula, but I have to I have to pay attention to it because of exactly this issue. If one is a root of your homogeneous characteristic equation, polynomials are are tricky. Uh, they are deceivers. All right, so we got. Some time to do some more examples with with more detail let's do one with the the full um, full problem a n equals um, 4 a n minus 1 plus let's say n times 4 to the n. Okay, so I don't know how bad this is going to be. Uh, it can't be worse than what's in my notes though. Uh, but let's just do this. Um, so let's find the general solution. And then depending on how bad it is, we'll find a, a solution with an initial condition. So find the general solution. Okay, so in doing these, like I've been saying, it's better to do the homogeneous part first because that'll help us uh, in the particular part. So homogeneous are homogeneous recurrence will be a n equals four a n minus one. So this is decept uh, deceptively easy. The recurrence relation here, or sorry, the, the characteristic equation here would be it's degree one. So it's just going to be r minus the coefficient 4 equals 0. So r equals 4 is our only root. 
So our homogeneous solution would be AHN would be alpha, I don't need a substrate because I just want alpha times 4 to the n. So there's our homogeneous solution. So let me write that over here. AHN is alpha times 4 to the n. All right, so now the particular solution, APN well, our base is four for our non-homogeneity function, and that's the base in our homogeneous solution. So I start with that exponential part. I match my, my uh, polynomial degree, it's degree one, so I need AN plus B. But again, since 4 is a root of the homogeneous, I have to multiply by n to its multiplicity. Its multiplicity was 1, so I just need to multiply by n. Okay. Again, the thought process is I'm trying to get all of my coefficients from this particular solution out of the realm of the homogeneous solution. Here I have a constant times 4 to the n. b times 4 to the n would be that same type of deal. So I have to multiply it by an n for it to escape. Okay, so APN will be AN squared plus BN times 4 to the N. All right, so let's write that down over here. So now we want to do the, the whole problem. So now we have to figure out what are A and B. So alpha, let me, let me reiterate this. Alpha is generic. Alpha can be anything and still satisfy the, the homogeneous uh, recurrence. For the particular solution, there will be one function, that one sequence of this form that satisfies this full non-homogeneous non recurrence. And so it has a specific A that it needs and a specific B that it needs. So if I want to find those, I take that particular solution's form and I plug it into this recurrence. So I'm going to use this APN in place of AN here. So we're going to have AN squared plus BN times 4 to the N equals 4 times... Now I plug in n minus 1 in place of all these n's. So a times n minus 1 squared plus b times n minus 1 times 4 to the n minus 1, then plus n times 4 to the n. So the non-homogeneity part, that is just what it, what it is. It, you, you're not plugging anything into that. It's, it's itself. I'm just replacing the a parts with the appropriate... Uh, expression with, with the appropriate subscript plugin. Okay, so now this is going to be messier than the ones we've done before. The first step, I, I don't think we did any, I guess I guess the very first one we did was a, a single exponential expression. But we haven't done the combination of an exponential part with a polynomial part. To make it significantly easier, the first thing I'm going to do is divide out as many fours as I can. And this one actually makes it easier. In general, this was a different coefficient. Uh, if this were a different coefficient and more complicated recurrence, then I could divide everything by four to the n minus one, and I'd get rid of all these exponential functions. But in this case, it's, it's extra easy, because I've got this four with four to the n minus one. Together, that's four to the n. So every single term in this addition has a 4 to the n. So what I'm going to do is just divide everything by 4 to the n. So I'm dividing both sides of the equation by 4 to the n. So this is going to go away. 
this is gonna go away, and both this and this extra four go away. Okay. Um, it's, it's lucky in this situation because it, it was a degree one recurrence, so that'll happen. Um, So let's now try to solve for A and B. This is this will now be similar to what we did before. If I multiply this stuff out, I have A n squared plus B n on this side. Here I'll have A n squared um, minus 2 A n plus A plus B n minus B plus n. Um, the a n squared, that's automatically the same, so that's not going to help. But I have b, looking at the n parts, I have b equals negative 2 a plus b. Oh, plus 1. I'll plus another between word there. <laughs> plus 1 for the n. Uh, that gives me, let's see, the b's cancel. I get negative 1 equals negative 2 a. So I guess I should do A equals one half. That's not too bad. So now I can go back up here and say A is one half. Let me just put it here for now. But we still need B. So look at the constant parts of these equations. On this side, I have zero. On this side, I've got A minus B. So B equals A, which is one half. So B is also one half. Okay, so that one's not, not too bad at all. Uh, all right, so our final answer, our general solution would be A N equals our homogeneous part, alpha times four to the n, plus our particular part, but with this a and with this b. So that's one half n squared plus one half n times four to the n. Okay, so there's our answer to this part. So this is part a. Then part b, since this is this easy, let, let's do the next part. Uh, if I introduced an initial condition, and since this is a degree one recurrence, I just need a single initial condition, so A0 general. Suppose A0 was uh, seven, then to find it, I plug in N equals zero to this and solve for alpha. And it should be very easy in this case. I get seven equals alpha times four to the zero, four to the zero is one, plus if I plug in zero here, this all disappears because everything has an N. So alpha equals seven. So my unique solution in this case would be seven. Well, let me just erase it. My unique solution with this initial condition would be seven times four to the N plus that stuff. Yeah, so this was much simpler than the one I had in my notes. Um, the key step for solving for A and B is when you plug plug A, P, and into this recurrence, you have to divide out the uh, most, the, the, the largest power of this exponential thing that you have, divide that out, and then you just get a polynomial equation like before. It won't always be as short as what I did here because I guess I guess it was easier because I, I did have the same root here that I had here. Um, so it all basically disappeared. But that's not always the case. Okay, so what I will do now is I 
think, let me, where's my next page? I believe that we finished section 8.2 finally. Yeah, 8.2 was, was uh, recur uh, linear recurrences. So you completely finished that section. I will add some problems here from that section. So it's all, I already assigned some homogeneous examples. Now I'll assign some non-homogeneous stuff. Um, so you should look at those. Try to do them on your own. If you have questions over some of them, you can send me an email or, or post a comment, and, and we can do some more examples um, on video. Uh, pretty soon, I'll, 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 I'll post that in homework. Those are practice problems. Then I'll post a, a quiz with a, just a few example, a few problems of these different types, and that'll be the official quiz. So that'll be the participa participation grade. Make sure you, you download that when it's posted. You access it so I see that you, you accessed it and get, can get credit. And then I'll do the uh, problems myself as another video for, for the quiz. Um, all right, so that's, that's it. Um, yeah, if I have anything else important, I think I'll send an email.